I'll tell you what, I mind you, you're going to laugh because I'll tell you what I'm not looking forward to. As you know, I do a lot of prides. Yeah. But you know, like when we finally get back doing prides, man, I'm going to be snatching wigs, I can tell you, with some of these drags fighting over chromatic tracks. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hell to me. We're all going to be like, oh, no, you ain't singing it, I'm singing it. <laughs> oh my God, I bet. It makes me laugh as well because some of the, like, the tributes that I see when they're doing like, the online shows... A lot of the fans sort of like come on live and they're like, do Babylon. And it's like, Gaga hasn't even done that one live yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> calm down a bit. Hello and welcome back to The Tucked Guesser. I am Kenzie Blackheart. I'm Charcuterie. And we are two drag queens whose mission is to dive deep under the costumes of the Masked Singer UK to determine who their true identities really are. So this week we are discussing week six of the Masked Singer UK, but we are not doing it alone this week because we have got a very special guest joining us. The one and only, one of the best Lady Gaga tributes in the world, the one and only Donna Marie Trigo. How are you, Han? I'm good, thank you. Feeling all locked up, but loving life. <laughs> have you been watching along at home? I have. Um, it's quite a thing in our house, well, for me and my husband, Danielle, because we end up screaming at the TV and arguing over things. We kind of feel we have an idea who most people are now, so... Um... There's quite a few where Shah and I are still disagreeing, so it'd be quite good to get another voice involved. <laughs> Especially if you agree with me. like. Because I've got them all right, you see. <laughs> yeah, she, she likes to say she has, but we'll see about that. But jumping straight in with the first one of this week, which was Dragon, who, of course, Shah and I are still debating about. But I have a confession to make. Go on. Then. You were wrong. Please say you were wrong. The clues this week <laughs> did give me Sue Perkins. Do you remember early on, I said I was waiting for them to mention lots of food and this idea of weird food? That's what we got this week. It's the only thing I've been waiting on. Yeah, yeah. They they spoke about a lot of weird things that they've eaten. So wasn't it like pig's bladder and... Pig's bum and duck's tongue and something's liver and... Yeah. Do you not um, think that that might be something that throws you off? Like that could be like a lie? Well, potentially. I did try to look and do a bit of deep dive research because I sort of thought so obviously Courtney Act Australia and with shows like I'm a Celebrity the infamous Bush Tucker trial they get them to eat all that sort of thing so I didn't know whether it was maybe a part of Courtney's early diet whether there was any sort of delicacies from Australia that she would have eaten as a youngster before she turned vegan. I might have someone that's going to totally throw it in the works to you and totally blow your minds. <laughs> oh god, here we go. Yeah. I think it's someone totally different. Okay, so I think it's Ruth Jones from Gavin and Stacey, Stacey Nessa. So I don't know if you noticed, but when they film, they're actually filming in Castle Coch, which is in Wales, where myself and my husband got married. So that's the Welsh thing. Dragon, she has a dragon tattoo on her arm when she's Nessa. Um, mm -hmm. Also, so they had like, um, this week they had the clues of where she's like by her mic and, and being interviewed, but maybe it could be her interviewing someone else because I know she has her own radio show. And then they always go on about um, this person now being it alone which obviously she would have usually been in Gavin and Stacey. The other thing then was the wings thing, because everyone keeps saying wings are Courtney and stuff like this. So in 1998, she was in a film called The Theory of Flight. And also um, her CV Stella was on Sky One. So I just kind of thought maybe Sky Wings, I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. We love that as well. Mm -hmm. Stella. And in a rainbow on a costume, obviously, she's a big ally for uh, LGBT and stuff, but I know it caused a major, major thing in the public when um, Gavin and Stacey did their karaoke in 2010 and they said Fairy Tale in New York. Um, and obviously, um, yeah. there's been lots of 
plate over the, you know, the words and stuff. Um, but obviously, like, she sort of defended it in a sense of, like, just saying she was just being true to the time of when they filmed it. And obviously, she's an ally for LGBT. So that's my clues. That's what I think. Okay. <laughs> I think. I think it sounds a bit like her when you hear the voice as well, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. To be fair, I'm not going to argue with Donna when it comes to stuff like voice and that, because... Obviously, you are um, perfectly qualified for judging singing on TV <laughs> because you've done it before oh. on a uh, a little show called All Together Now. So, yeah. do you agree, Donna? I, I think Dragon is definitely a woman. Yeah, I mean, I had my there was a point of where like I wasn't sure, and I even started to think it was hate from Steps. Okay, because um, that's been another thing. You know, when that one finally gets a mass, we're all just going to go, oh, shoot, like, yeah, grrr, like, you know. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I just want to throw a new new person in the mix for you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> Kenzie, who are you, where are you at with Dragon? So, because I'm a stubborn little bitch, I still want to say Courtney Act, but <laughs> I will give Shah her credit in that I did think the clues this week did lead towards... Sue Perkins on the basis of um, the shows like How to Eat Like a Tudor and all of that. I'm going to still stick with Courtney Act. You're going to stick with Courtney Act? Courtney yeah. till I die! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, if you can't stick by yourself, then what can you do, really? Absolutely. After Dragon, we moved on to Harlequin, who we have had some complaints about the clue packages. I think we're both settled on the same name, and I'm... I'm nailed in 100% after this week's episode because I think it's the most they've, the best they've sounded, the most they've sounded like the name we're going with and I think the clue package has, has been has been the most useful Yeah, this week was really good actually for Harlequin We're both going to stick with Gabrielle. Um, Donna do you have any other Definitely. ideas? Definitely, Definitely No, from week one, from the minute I heard her voice I was like, she has a very distinctive voice I would be absolutely gobsmacked if it was anyone else because everything I can only hear her. It was a bit like with Sophie Ellis Baxter. We've heard everything that she sings, you know, even to where she takes her breath is a bit like mm. the way yeah, Gabrielle exactly. sings. So I just think the clues have just pushed her along. It's, it, they all seem quite obvious as far as her being a performer, music, traveling, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I'm 100% Gabrielle. And if I'm wrong, I'll eat my hat that I haven't got. I'm sure you've got the, um, uh, the Joanne hat somewhere, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of the clues we had this week for Harlequin, just to just to summarise, we had the idea of wearing, uh, starting out in a man's suit because of the man's world. In in that first video in Dreams, she is wearing a suit along with her famous eye patch. Yeah. She also mentions that despite having met lots of world uh, world leaders, dignitaries, and such. They don't compare to a prince she met. That actually, I don't think, is royalty so much as the singer prince who was an yes. idol of hers. Yeah, that's exactly where I went with that clue as well. It's not, she wasn't talking about an actual prince. It was the singer prince. And what did you think about the ba uh, behind the scenes clue where she dropped her fan? I'm not too I, sure. On one. <laughs> I, I think I sussed it. Because it was, so so she dropped the fan, and then the fan was out of reach. Oh, oh that's, that's a good one. I think it was as simple as that, because I, I was sat there overthinking it. I was like, okay, so she can't get the fan. What, what does it, I mean, we don't want to hear about a horror story where she's trying to get a fan and she can't get a fan and yeah, or something no. like that. Yeah, no, that's a good one, actually. Yeah. Very good, loving that. So we all agree, Gabrielle. I think unless next week's clue package offers anything else, I think it's going to pretty much be Gabrielle to the end. Which moves us nicely onto uh, the unfortunately eliminated blob, which we was both correct about. It was Sir Lenny Henry. Uh, Lenworth Henworth. Lenworth Henworth, yes. The clues this week, I didn't get too many of them, but the, the snooping clue about the giant check, I did obviously get that about being red nose though so that just literally solidified it for me yeah same for us as well i mean i've been saying lenny henry again he's another one distinctive voice you could kind of hear it it come out quite often and it's singing and then obviously um i know i, I watched like last week where you're talking about the hotels and stuff like that you obviously premiered in you know it was just mm. 
Trek. Yeah, I, I mean, it just seemed pretty obvious. I was glad he got a mask actually this week because I feel he's been quite obvious all along. So same. I've, in fact, I've literally written. I, I'll read exactly what I've written. Blog, Lenny Henry. Shakespeare, Shakespeare, Shakespeare. It's him. Why haven't they guessed him yet? Oh my God! Thank you, Davina. Yeah, even from the first show, we had been saying Lenny Henry as well because his voice is so distinctive, there is no one else it could be. Yeah, definitely, 100%. But he's gone now, so that's when the easy one's gone. <laughs> I know. Next week, we're back to arguing about everyone else. So moving on as well to... Oh, no, we are actually sure on this one, which is Robin. Are you still sticking with Aston Merigold, that sort of JLS realm? I'm... I'm... Adamant. Yeah, I gotta be fair, and I, I love Aston anyhow, so you know, he's a great singer. I'm enjoying his performances actually, if I'm honest, so uh, I quite like if he stayed in for a bit, if I'm honest. <laughs> Absolutely, I think by himself performing as Robin, we're really seeing that sort of coolness and swag that he has, which you can't buy that sort of thing, and he's brilliantly displaying it. I hope if he makes the final, he does a backflip. Because why not? <laughs> yeah. I also hope that he, at some point, will perform Dancing on My Own because that would just be a lovely, like, Inception, you know, Robin performing a song by Robin. Yeah, that'd be I cool. love that he performed a song by Badger. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. What a tangent. How is that for a segue? <laughs> Talking about Badger, I'm actually going back to an old guest for Badger, only because, again, I'm very stubborn, so I will not admit when I'm wrong. But I'm actually going back to Andy Circus after this week's guesses. Okay. So we had the whole thing about um, sets. There was a lot of talk about sets. And obviously, Badger, Andy Circus has spent a good deal of his career on green screen sets. Yeah, and there was also a lot of talk about uh, plays games. So I imagine, you know, the whole talk about living in a virtual world, etc. that's going to have to tie in somewhere with that. Okay. Donna, where are you at with Badger? Okay, so my husband's determined is Carl Fogarty because he's a big sort of racing fan and stuff. Um, and I know, sorry. That's <laughs> literally like, who I said last week. I'm so happy yeah, you said that. The green shirt, obviously, like that's, he always wears a lucky green shirt whilst racing. He's been a celeb, the motorbike, like the whole, whole thing so far. But the other thing I did pick up on, because I mentioned Barbara, there was a digital ad campaign that he joined in the launch of. And that was on Barbara Castle Way. I don't know if I'm just looking too way out on this. I don't know. Um, okay. But that's the only way that I could connect Barbara with him. I mean, my husband's determined, definitely Carl Fogarty. And I'm kind of, yeah, I, I'm not seeing any, no one's throwing anyone else at me at the minute. I'm actually going, mm, yeah, maybe. So, I don't know. Well, I'm going to do my best, Donna. I'm going to do my best. Um, I said last week that it was singer-songwriter Neo. In terms of stuff that, uh, from this clue package, they talked about being on sets as well as in sets. Um, Neo has done lots of acting work. He's been uh, Hollywood, TV. Now, the ones that settled it for me, he looked up Milliner magazine, which they, the panel on the show, clicked into about being about hats. Neo also famously is a big hat person. Um, and then it said coding for badgers. And there is indeed an app by Neo called Neo Connect. And so I'm sticking with Neo. Ooh, now I don't get, okay, now I'm just going to switch it back though now on the singing side of it. I I know. Yeah, definitely, I think so. I think it's someone older than Neo, and Neo has, you know, he got certain, even at, like I said, he, sometimes you can change your voice a bit, unless he's a uh, someone who's really good at doing that, because I don't know, I just think, like you said, it's definitely, it's too, too old a voice for him. The only thing I'd say, in response to that, he did a production of The Wiz, the musical. Yeah. And yeah. I couldn't yeah. get my head around how much he'd changed. His speaking voice more, as that is generally easier to do. I mean, I now remembering that, I think he could be putting on that British accent. Ooh. But the thing about the British accent is that we as Brits, we find it easier to do the American accent than the Americans find it to do the British accent because any American, near enough, they do a British accent. They sound like Dick Van Dyke. It's very difficult <laughs> for them to pull off an, an authentic British accent without 
you know, turning into Castle Mary Poppins. You want to hear them trying to do a Welsh accent? That's even funnier. <laughs> oh, God. Speaking of accents, someone with a Norwegian accent. Oh, my God. Someone get her a two wheeled motorbike because she is good at these segways today. <laughs> Um, someone with a Norwegian accent would be Viking, who also, unfortunately, and actually, to my slight surprise, yeah. uh, was unmasked this week. I thought they did really brilliantly at that song. It suited Viking's voice so perfectly, I think. Mm. It was a bit short. I don't know whether it was just me, but I was watching it and I was like, are we not getting another chorus or something? <laughs> yeah, whether it was cut for time a bit, who knows? Well, obviously the production staff do, but... They were like, ah, he's out anyway. Just quit, end it there. Probably. Your TV's a bit like that. When you're done, you're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it was pretty obvious with Viking out, don't you think? Even like this week's clues as well, when they sort of rolled out this like sort of sheet music and it was like the longest note. I mean, it, you know, it, it, like that straight away, like for us, I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's been like a scream at the telly, yeah, see, it's him, it's yeah. him. <laughs> the only one that I th thought was a bit tricky was um, the the backstage, or sort of the surveillance clue. Um, I, I got it, but I thought, actually, what people are normally saying there is aha, rather than aha. I don't blame the panel for not getting it, because if you're not looking for it, you may not have heard it. Yeah, loved it. It was actually good to see him again performing as well, you know, so that was nice. 61. All right, stop it. He was like around when I was in my school discos. <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> but I mean, he looks and sounds incredible for 61. That's unreal. But he's quite a legend when you think about it, so it was really great that they had him on the show, I think. Hmm. Oh, Absolutely. Percent, yeah. I'm trying to think of a transition and I can't. <laughs> Kenzie, over to you. <laughs> okay, well... Uh... Speaking of sausage, here's Kenzie with the next contestant. <laughs> Speaking of transitions, <laughs> let's go to the Queen wearing the Support Trans Lives t-shirt. That's all I can think of. So, sausage. <laughs> where are we with sausage? I've gone sort of back, I guess, to Sheridan Smith, but... This week, there was a moment where I did think it could be someone like Stacey Dooley. It's definitely a Stacey. No. I do think it's Stacey Solomon. So, yes, this is the thing, though. So I'm, I've been Sheridan Smith all along, right? This week, the masks as well in the backstage footage, which made it for me then even more like, yeah, see, she's someone on stage. There it is. I've also been feeling very Stacey Solomon with the Essex thing, the teeth mm. thing, the horse thing. It's like, you're like, but then another thing that kind of threw me in a bit, I did at one point um, think of Michelle Gale because they did at one point kind of show stuff from EastEnders and stuff. Like, and I was thinking, hmm. And Michelle Gale, you know, like she's a hell of a singer. She's been in lots of theatre um, shows and stuff in the West End. But then again, like with Sheridan Smith, so they've said about like a couple of beers and a bag of potato crisps. So that is like, to me, two pints of lager and a pack of crisps. I, I think it probably is Sheridan, but for me, I just, I don't quite hear her. I have to admit, I do, because especially at the moment, we've been watching a lot of that um, Pooch Perfect, which she is currently hosting. We That's why she's a well. sausage. <laughs> That's why she's a sausage. Dogs love sausages. It Very true. Very part. true. Do you know what? I've been wrecking my brain again last night after I finished, just trying to connect a sausage with Sheridan Smith. And I'm still struggling, you know, when you're like, they've got to be something. Is there not like something I don't know? A photo of an eating a giant sausage or something that's going to come out? Well, just off the top of my head, the only thing I could think is maybe it's not the sausage we should be paying attention to. And the fact that the headlines change every week is a reference to her tumultuous relationship with the press. Now, that, uh, since we've got a guest, I wanted to ask her, pose a couple of questions to both of you, and I'll, I will also answer them, although I've not thought about them because I'm just deciding the questions now. Okay. Who, who do you think are going to be top three? We've got a double elimination next week, which will leave us a top three for the final. Who do you think is going to be top three? Top three, yeah. So I think it's going to be Sausage, Robin. I'd like it to be Dragon, because I think it'd be cool to really hold it out that long. But it might be Badger. 
instead of Dragon, but they would be. I think Harlequin might go this week. I have a feeling I agree with you. The more difficult ones for the end of the season, because otherwise no one's going to tune in for the finale, are they? Because we would already know. With that, I think Sausage and Robin definitely in the final. And I would maybe like to see Badger in the final as well, only because I really enjoy that voice. Um, I think Badger will definitely be in the final. I think Robin will definitely be in the final. And then I'm between Harlequin or Sausage. I would love Dragon to be there, but I they've been in the bottom two or three times now. And so I don't think they're resonating with the, the audience, obviously, in the studio that's voting for them. Yeah, it sounds totally different as well in the studio to what it sounds on TV. <laughs> So, oh, a thousand percent. So, like, those audience members are voting on what they can hear in there. And they, it never... I remember when I was on All Together Now, I mean, I sometimes would stand up for people or not stand up for people, and then when we finally got to see it on TV, I'd be like, why didn't you stand up for that person? Because they didn't sound yeah. like that, though. <laughs> you know, no. so... And my second, my second question is, if you were to be on Masked Singer, what character thing animal they tend to be animals but what what would you pick to be your mask i've actually already thought about this so i think that she's my... already made it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just in the, it's, yeah the costumes just sat in the drag studio just ready to go i'm just waiting for that phone call from them to say you know harlequin's passed out can you come down no, I thought my costume would be something like the Lady Robot. So obviously they like to go on sort of like hidden facts about these celebrities, etc. And apart from like those that are very close to me, not a lot of people will know I've spent a lot of my life um, around the sort of the hobby of um, shows like Robot Wars, um, building robots, fighting them. I used to do that a lot in my teens. And yes! And even today, I'm actually the freelance creative director for a upcoming video game called Robot Rumble 2. So something like that, I think, would be really fun to do something like a lady robot. Lady, obviously, because of Gaga, but the robot to sort of mimic that side of uh, my life as such. I need there to be a drag bot stat. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I would love to do something like, um, as well, what... Uh, Rubber Duck did in the first series where it was like, oh, we're performing Madonna. Let's get the comb bra on it. I'd love to do something like that. Yes. That'd be cool. How about you, Donna? Probably, for obvious reasons, it would probably be a unicorn if it was to do with me being a Gaga tribute. I would think that would make sense because of the, obviously, unicorns and whatever. Just, But then if it was just on me, I'd probably want to come as a Pomeranian. <laughs> yes, love oh, that. Oh, cute! What a pug. A pug got a Pomeranian. I would love that. <laughs> yeah, so I love... I've, obviously, we got four dogs. They rule us now instead of we ruling them. So it's crazy. But yeah, I think that would definitely be... If it was something about me, I think that would be something. Um, just some crazy pom there with big fluffy fur everywhere and little skinny legs. I think that'd be quite funny, actually, <laughs> as a costume. <laughs> I imagine that Pomeranian costume would get very hot, though, the amount of fur you would need to make it. Yeah, yeah. I do like all the mirrored costumes they do, though. They're amazing. I love, like, the, the, the fox world and stuff like that. Oh, my God, love those. I'm between two. I would either want, like, a really sort of halfway between, you know, fox from last year and yeah. swan from this year. Oh, yeah. Something between that and I'll be a bat. For no reason beyond, I like bats. This year, babe, bats have caused too much trouble the last couple of years. No, that's it. I'll be restoring. <laughs> I'll be. I'll be fixing the reputation. Or, I think I'd just like to be a pig. I think that'd be really funny. <laughs> Do you know what? That would be cool. I'd like to see something like a pig in a tutu or something like that. That'd be so. I want to yes, be Miss Piggy, absolutely. basically. <laughs> I'll just be Miss Piggy. I mean, I gotta be honest, those costumes are amazing. I mean, I know some amazing costume designers, but I would love to go and spend a week in there while they were making those costumes. Like, mm. they are fantastic. I think we need an exhibition on the costumes. We'll we'll start putting in a, uh, a petition now for an exhibition on it when uh, things reopen. So yeah, um, 
as we said, next week, obviously, it's going to be our near enough our penultimate episode. So join us then for that. Um, but until then, thank you again to the absolutely amazing Donna for joining us. It's been so lovely to have you here. Thank you for having me, Bo. <laughs> no problem at all. Where can they? Where can the people watching this find you online? So online, um, if you check out on Twitter, on Instagram, Donna Marie Gaga, you'll find me on there. I'm on YouTube as Donna Marie. Um, Facebook, Lady Gaga Tribute, Donna Marie. If you type in that, you'll find me. Usually, if you just type in Donna Marie, Lady Gaga, and a search by load rubbish, will come up. So you can find me there. Any efforts? Lovely. <laughs> and I seriously cannot say this enough. Like, if you are a fan of Lady Gaga, seriously check out Donna because the accuracy in which she does portray Gaga. It is spot on, and that is coming from someone who's followed Gaga from day one. And with that, um, me and Shah will see you next week. Uh, we don't know if we will have another special guest, that's TBC, but until then, uh, stay safe, and we'll see you again on the Tut Guesser. Bye bye. Bye. I'm taking my earrings off because they're hurting. Ah! Oh yeah, this is the part of the show where uh, Shah starts to de-drag before our very eyes. Yeah, I just it look, it's all it's all an all an illusion. Oh look! You could even say it's all just an, a perfect illusion. <laughs> I assume that's a Gaga track, is it? <laughs> of course. Yeah, Joanne, <laughs> track went over my, completely over my head. <laughs> uh.